page 33, I think, 33, yeah, it's for Elise. It's a very famous piece by Beethoven. This is a nice arrangement of, well, it's not really much of an arrangement, it's almost like it's written of the main theme. There are other themes, this is like a rondo form, it's a different themes. Pretty much any piano student that gets very far plays this at one time or another. You know, I took it to music festival back in junior high school, I had a wonderful time with it. Now you look at all that and all those 16th notes, you think, good grief, look at all that black ink all over it. However, keep in mind this is in 3-8 time. That means an 8th note gets a count, which means a 16th note, which is all this mess, that's just half a count. So we're going 1 and 2 and 3 and, 1 and 2 and 3 and. If you do it that way, then it's not quite so intimidating, I hope. Huh? No sharps or flats, we're in the key of A minor. Make sure you can do the scale for A minor. Two octaves up and down, and the scale for C major. Two octaves up and down, and it wouldn't hurt you to be doing the arpeggios for these, at least two octaves up and down, too. It's all in my videos for scales and arpeggios. You can go, go have a ball at home. Hmm? And when I say that, the idea is that I went on the top days when you're working on this piece, the first time you sit down to practice of a day, because if you're like me, you'll sit down multiple times in the day to practice, because I only practice for short periods of time, but I do it several times a day. Most days. Yeah. The first time of the day, I do the scales and arpeggios that I'm working on in the piece. So in this case, you do those scales and arpeggios. You don't do them every time you sit down to practice necessarily, because if you wanted to, but you'll need, to, in my opinion, you just need to do it at least once, and so make it the first time. Like, it's part of the warm-up of getting the fingers and the mind set to practice. But, so here, they've got a uh, fingering, this has a pick up, three and three and one and two and three. And that's okay, a lot of people finger it that way. I prefer fifth finger, because this puts me in this position, I can do it all there. Here. That's a personal choice. You figure it any way you want. And then we just have these arpeggiated chords. One and two. Because this one and two. Lift up. And uh, that's a four there. Because hit. And the and left hand. It's the last two measures. The first line here. It's a thumb. It's an octave. And a crossover. You, you get eventually where you can do this. And connect them. Well, if you're doing the arpeggios on the different stuff that we've been doing, this sort of thing is pretty easy because a lot of times you got to go to the fourth finger. If you can go to fourth finger, you certainly go to second. There. And remember to lift up in the right hand. But this is immediately. So there's a difference. See, they're, they're, they're saying th five, three, four, because they want to put four on that. I just stay with five. Five, four, four. That's a D. I don't agree with that D there. It's appropriate, I think, at the end of the piece, but not here. Go on, second ending. You're here. Again, it's just an octave and crossover. You eventually get where you can do that without looking at the keyboard. You feel it, and that's okay. It helps. So again, that third line. Now, by the way, that now is a dotted quarter note, which is the same as three sixteenth notes. So now you don't have the rest. Before we had a sixteenth rest. You hold that down, but not the left hand. And this is a sequence. And I, out of habit, I do a finger substitution each time. The fingering in the book is fine, but I, I immediately put my fourth on it. It makes it a little easier to reach the next note here. And I'll, I'll finger each of those same way however you're doing it yeah so again the third line these are just off
octaves. This is the last two measures here. Come on. Hover it over and be ready to go. That's a, that's an E in case you didn't know. You need to know that note. There's three laser lines above the treble clef. Memorize it. It's an E. It's way up there. And then here, right hand or left hand, right hand. This helps to add to the articulation and the effect and the feel of interpreting. It's ba da ba da 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 da. So go ahead and use the different hands on this. And if you're here, here, thumb, and then come down. That's fine. It works. And that's pretty much the piece. I went a little fast. You take it really slow and easy because I've been playing this forever. So uh, Try and connect everything. Play it all legato. But those 16th notes have to be even. There can be no hesitations anywhere. It's got to be a solid bum, 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 bum. And once you have that at some speed, then we can put in the phrasing here. It's built in. I disagree with that. I would phrase all of that together here. They're overlapping phrases. This is a phrase. And this is a phrase. And one phrase ends at the same time another phrase begins, so do it. And your, your breaks are built in for you because of the rest. And here, now, now you can break. The way that music is written here, on the last major, the first line here, you do that. I think it's actually a little better if you connect those notes here and then lift up. That makes the pickup the same as the beginning. So put in the phrasing here. Third line down is fine. Phrase it the way it's written. The staccato. Two no slurs. Up, down, down, up, down, up. Down. These second note on these two note slurs is not really a short staccato. You're just lifting up for the two note slur. The first one is a staccato because again it's, it's down low. Even playing a short, it's not that short. So forth, so put in the phrasing. And for the dynamics, well, this is gentle. Very soft, and it's both hands here. And the end of the second line there, the second, you go up to moderately like this. Demi writ, or a dim writ, it should be demi writ, at the end of the third line. Diminuendo and retardando, you're going to get softer and softer. And well, you're soft to begin with, but you're going down to very soft, which isn't very far. And you're going to slow down. So, again, the uh, last two measures of the third line. And then at the off tempo. You can pick it up again, here. And again, there's a couple ways of doing an all tempo. So, which way do you want? Well, pick one. You can take off again immediately. So, the fourth line is here. Or you can speed up and go into it. Just take a couple of notes to gradually get going again. So, it's here. It just 
which it's a very subtle change, but you can pick one. I mean, sometimes one works better than the other, so try them both. The end, there's a tenuto on that, so linger on that. You could do this whole thing without pedal just fine. Just it, it, And it, uh, you need to learn it without pedal to make sure that you're holding the notes down the right time and they're even and, and the phrasing is there, everything is there. However, it's typical to pedal this and that's fine because it adds overtones and it adds color. And they're showing legato pedal here so for the most part. You don't pedal this part here, anywhere it shows, you don't pedal it. You don't pedal this part because we need to hear that two note bottom, 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 doll, and the pedal will cover it up. So if I pedal it the way they're showing, this is what we get. So it's overlapping. I'm going to, the notes do their thing first and then the pedal, and then I'm changing the pedal after I play the notes in each measure. It looks like they're changing it pretty much on every measure. Line down is every measure. If you like that sound, fine. I think it's all wrong. I totally disagree with it. For the most part, this part at the beginning, don't pedal that anywhere, it appears. Lift it up right there. I, I, I don't. When you play that, lift the pedal up immediately. I don't pedal these. I want that clean. So you can lift the pedal up after you play the first note in that. So it's here, this third line. Right there, I lift the pedal up there. And I don't pedal this at all. And I disagree with their telling you to pedal through that. No. I want to hear that da 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 da. I want to da 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 da. I want to hear that. Until I get to that A. Now you can, if you want, clear out the sound on these. You can clear the sound out by lifting up on the last beat. Lift it up there. We hear the rest in the left hand, or at least part of them. It's different effects. Um, you have to experiment with them and decide which one do you like. Maybe one time you do it one way and another time you do it another. Since this is repeated, it's, got re it's all repeated. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first time you play it, you play it one way, and then when you repeat it, you try a different pedaling, try different and see. So it's not the same exact thing. And we don't want to play things twice like that exactly the same way if we can help it. And dynamics and articulation, well, pedaling is another thing you can change too. Now, out of habit, I put a shell in these. Because in the actual way it's written, there is a shell in it. You go, da, 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 and it comes down. And out of habit, I just do that.
piece, it slows down and it says to die away. There's a Mirindo in there in the actual piece. So I think it would be better if you did slow down at the end of this. The last line, second time. It would be much more effective if you'd go ahead and slow down there. Even though the music doesn't say to. I would, I would suggest you write that in. Just the second time you play it, not the first time because there's a first and second ending. I do have a recording of this on my other channel. I'll try and put a link in it, but you can find lots of recordings of this. So if you're going to listen to it, listen to several different people because they'll interpret it different. They'll take it at different speeds. All kinds of things are different. And that's where the excitement is. It's like, wow, all these different ways of interpreting the same piece of music. Just don't violate what the music tells you to do. That's all.